Hey guys, how you doing? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you guys about this new movie that I discovered on BT Plus. I watched it first. I discovered it on TikTok, and then I went to BT Plus and I found it. It's called The Reading. It has Monique in it, and it has a couple other comic scenes supporting actors as well. I will feature them in the video. Um, you'll see pictures of them, but it has a lot of people in it. I love the movie itself. It had like it's a thriller. I like scary movies. I watch scary movies every now and then. I watched Megan. I liked it. it wasn't too much. It's kind of like it's Megan on the violent scale. If you've seen Megan, it's, it's Megan on the violent scale, but without the doll, <laughs> without the doll, and without. Uh, it has a couple other things in there that are kind of like um the violent the violent reign of Megan, but not similar to Megan at all. Besides that. And um, the movie itself, it's done really well. It's shot really well. However, there are a couple of points in there that are a little bit overly done. But for it to be the first film where I've seen Monique be like crazy or in, like, insane or just psychotic in general, I liked it. I really did. I like those type of movies for, for some reason. And if you are really into the movies where it's like there's violence, a little bit of violence, a little bit of gore, a little bit of blood, then movies where it's like you're seeing the actor and it's in their element. If you're into movies where the violence is not too much, the thriller is just enough, and the actors just do what they do, then I think you should watch it. I think you should really watch it. Now, I'm going to start talking about the movie. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the movie and you really want to see it, I would I would advise you to start watching it like now. I would advise you to, to literally come out of my video if you haven't seen it and you don't want to see spoiled and to go ahead and watch it, okay? And then come back and watch my review on the video, okay? <laughs> so I was actually really fulfilled with this movie. It made me feel very, very full after I watched this movie. Um, so when I watched this movie, it it was very, it was done very, very well, really well. But anyway, the people who haven't seen this movie should be gone now. The people who haven't seen this movie and don't want to be spoiled should be gone now. Okay, y'all really should be gone now. But if you are not, and you decided to stay, and you want to know my review on this movie, then I'm glad you stayed. Okay, you're good. Okay. So anyway, let's get into the movie. So it starts off with Emma coming home from a trip. She came home from a trip, and she's hugging her kids. She hugs her husband. He tells her little, her youngest, Kyron. To go ahead and start a bath. She lets Kendall know that she needs to go ahead and clean up her room. Her second. She lets her first child, Kendall, know that she needs to go ahead and clean her room. And then they go to Matthew. Matthew is the husband. And Matthew and Emma. Matthew and Emma have this moment he lets her know that he really what he wants for dinner and Matthew goes to have a conversation in his office Emma goes ahead and starts dinner Kyron's upstairs in the bathtub playing with his toys and then it starts five guys in ski masks come through the come through the house while Emma's in the kitchen cooking dinner. And they split up separately and go after Kyron in the bathtub. Kyron gets drowned in the bathtub. Kendall is suffocated in her room. And then Matthew is beaten to a pulp and shot in his office. And Emma hears this in the kitchen, 
she stops for a moment, grabs her knife, tries to fight back against one of the dudes that comes after her in the kitchen. Somehow, some way, she drops the knife. She gets beaten up. And the guy grabs the knife. He chops off one of her fingers. And he hits her in the face when she turns over. And she's trying to get up. Like, when she tries to get up, she get, her finger gets chopped off. And then, like, she's on the floor. And he just, like, hits her over the head with the chair. And then we jump ahead a year later. And she's written a book about it called The Invasion. Invasion. And while she's doing an interview with some girl, some woman, some blonde woman, I don't know her name, but she's doing an interview with her and she's letting her know, like, she doesn't want to be a victim anymore. She just wants to be seen as a person. She doesn't want to be, she's a survivor, but she doesn't want to be just a survivor. She wants to be Emma Leiden. And she, was, she just wants to get back to being Emma. So the reporter is like, that's really, that's really inspiring. And I really love that you that you want to do this for people, and um, I hope that this this helps you. And then we're introduced to Sky. Sky's character is a medium. She's a medium. She's in college, and Sky has her group of friends. Her and her group of friends they have this business where they um, go to people and they do readings for them, do psychic, spiritual readings for them. And her and her friend, um, her boyfriend, I'm going to call him Greg. I'm not sure what his, his actual name is on the show, on the movie, in the movie, but I'm going to call him Greg because I feel like his name is Greg. So I'm going to go with Greg. And then we have the other friends, Jesse and Randall. The other friends, Jesse and Randall. And then I believe that's it. Jesse, Randall, Sky, and possibly Greg. Yeah, that's where Greg, Greg feels really good. So after we meet them and we see that she has a team, she has everything to be a business and professional. So what's what's the scam here? Because you know you're in college, you're either hustling or scamming. It's one of the two. <laughs> it's one of the two. Your your side hustle may be just a real hustle, like something that you can get money off of and you can be found like you the thing that you, you're gonna do for the rest of your life, or the scam that you're doing for the moment. We've all had those. But anyway, so we realize what the scam is. The reading. The reading is a scam. The reading is a scam. Like she really does connect with these spiritual with these spirits. But these spirits, as you know, when you invite a spirit into your life, it is not a good thing. Like you don't even know who and what you're talking to. You could be talking to that spirit, or you could talk to that spirit's evil cousin. That's what you could really be talking to at this point. So she is like in the reading and she's doing the reading for one of her friends and when she's doing the reading for one of her friends she's like having this moment where she says she feels the spirit coming close to her so she's like she has to close the spiritual realm door the door to the spiritual realm she's like I have to close the door but before I close the door she has a question for you and the question is well, she has a question and a request for you at the same time. The request is that you go into your trust and you donate this amount of money to a Kids for Kids Foundation, which is really not even a real thing. But she just wanted to make it a, like, I feel like it's like some type of shell company that is really feeding their company. And it kind of like makes them more richer than anything. But anyway. After they make that donation, um, Sky and Greg have like a conversation with each other, and she tells him how she's really scared. She doesn't want to do the next gig. She wants to lay off the gig for a while and just take a break because she feels like the ghosts or the spirits are not happy that she's continuously disturbing them and using them for personal gain. So he doesn't believe that, and that the spirits don't have any feelings. There's no way in the world that they actually know what we're doing. So um, he doesn't really, um, so what he does instead 
So what he does is that he goes ahead and, like, since he doesn't really care whether or not how she feels, like, I don't think he, well, I don't want to say he doesn't care, because that, that sounds bad, because, like, okay, so I want to say he doesn't, it's not that he doesn't care, it's like he doesn't understand how she feels. He doesn't understand how she feels about the ghosts, because he doesn't have the connection that she has with those ghosts. So when he when she voices those opinions about it, he doesn't really take it too seriously. So he when he gets this next job from this woman, her name is Ashley. Ashley, she um she's Emma's publicist. Yeah, Emma's publicist and her sister in law. And she asks she knows what he does and he knows she um I guess Sky is a pretty big like medium somehow like she's getting known while like about what she's doing so somehow she comes across sky and she, she's like oh i don't really believe in what sky does but i believe this would be really good for emma if she believes in what sky does this is her thing so she's like i'm going to tell you a couple of things about emma and so the only way this would be true and authentic is if you say these same things about Emma in the reading. So he, she tells him all this stuff, and then we get to how he's going to tell this to Sky because Sky really doesn't want to do this. She this is the last thing she wants to do. She told him to stop. She told him to just take a break. But she, he needs to make this money because she, because Ashley offered him about twenty thousand dollars for them to do this reading. So he, he brings the group together. He's like, she can't say no if they're in a big group, though. Like, if I, if I voice this alone to her, she's definitely going to say no. But if I voice this in a way that she's around a whole lot of people, she may just say yes. So that's what he does. He puts, like, he puts together this group meeting of us, of them, like, of, the, um, of Jesse, Randall, and Greg and Scott. So Sky comes in, Sky is talking to Jesse, and she wants to talk to Jesse about like quitting and stopping for a minute. But then Jesse kind of spills the beans and let her know that they have a new gig or a mark, as they call it, a new mark. And the boyfriend, he tells her about the mark. He's like, This is Emma Leedon. She's filthy rich. She survived a home invasion. Her whole family died in a murder. And guys like I really really don't want to do this like this is different from what we usually do we usually handle people who have died from diabetes natural causes but this is murder this is a whole nother ball game and you want us to do this but and then Greg's like oh it's twenty thousand dollars and if we play this right we can get a hundred k and that means like if it's twenty thousand dollars we can split it five ways i mean four ways and it's five thousand each for four people like and if we have a hundred thousand that's even better because then it's like 25 we, we could play this right if we, if we do this and she was like i don't like this i don't like this at all I don't like this um and she leaves and then he they have this big old fight and then she goes home and she thinks about it and she's like she's gonna do it she forgets him. She lets him know that um, this is literally going to be the last gig we do. After this, we're done. There's nothing else that we're going to do with this gig um, after this gig. So um, you want to get comfortable with it. So they go in. They do the reading. They, and Emma takes Sky on a tour around the house. Emma has this has the house set up exactly how it looked in the beginning. Nothing has changed. Like as if you know, that that in itself is kind of weird. Like I don't understand how you are dealing with it if you, you can just see the same, like see all the remembrances and the mementos around you. That to me would kind of break me every second. But she goes in. She she does a tour around the house, and Sky and her are in Kendall's room, and she's having this emotional moment, and she's breaking down. And she's like, I can't come in here. This is a room that I cannot touch, which is understandable, because that was her her daughter. And um, uh, um, Sky lets her know, like, I hope that this does something for you. I hope this brings closure for you. And let's just go ahead and do this reading. 
they go ahead and they go into like the living room or like the dining room actually yeah the dining room and they do the reading and she has emma say the names back and forth back and forth of the names um kai kyron kendall and matthew like she says her kids names and her husband's name to call them and chant out the names and then she feels the spirits and she starts to tell emma all these little things about herself she tells she tries to tell emma that her favorite color is teal her her um her sign is a scorpio and she loves to cook seafood and when she seasons she cooks crawfish and she cooks fish and she when she seasons it so good her her fingers her fingers burn when um she um she cooks it or whatever she tells her like these little secrets that only her kids and her family would know and mainly her husband mainly her husband would know and there's this moment where the spirits are kind of like they're really connecting with her and i think i feel like the spirits in the house like they they felt they know that she could feel them so when sky says something like this is when this is when emma realizes that she's really talking the sky is really talking to her family when sky says that kendall used to wear clothes that she hated just to make her mom happy and that she would seal promises she would seal her promises with a pinky a pinky bear swear a pinky bear swear that is a saying that only her and her her daughters know that's not really something that she tells everyone and that was really hard for her to hear so she walks out of the room and Ashley talks with her she tries to calm her down and she lets her know that I told her a couple of things so that it would be a more authentic but there are a couple of things I didn't tell her so I don't know how she knew that but she's really really good anyway so they go back in there and they have they're having the rest of the conversation and Sky she gets this moment where she says she was feeling like the spirit was close like there was like something well actually she said that the door around she felt something dark she felt she felt like a dark energy around the spiritual door that she had opened to to speak to the spirits and she said she felt it and that right there would make me stop this completely. I would have walked out at that point. I wouldn't have been in that room. Continue to do the reading after that. But this is a scary movie, so it's going to continue. Of course it's going to continue. That's what they do. So after we get to the part where she says she feels something dark, she feels that dark energy around her. And Sky starts to have this moment where you can see that she's kind of possessed because her whole like face changes. You can see the veins in her head and all this, like it's a lot. The makeup and everything that was done, it was done really well. So you could see all of that on her face. And she's having like this moment and she's in and her vitals, like her pressure is rising. Her vitals are going off the charts. Like Jesse is freaking out and she's letting her know, like she's, she's telling Emma in the reading, that everyone's last breaths and last moments like she could feel she could feel their last breaths and their last moments that's how she was spiritually connected to these people she had let them touch her she wasn't supposed to let the spirits touch her because if they touch her they can possess her so at this point i feel like she got possessed <laughs> and she could literally feel them dying and that is when it changed when she felt them dying and Emma knew that she knew exactly how they died. And that's when Emma was like, so Emma goes to her security system that she had set up after the home invasion. And she locks all the doors. She locks all the doors. She goes back to the table. And she looks straight at Sky and looks at them and says, tell your friends why they can't leave. 
this guy says. Because she killed her whole family. Because Emma killed her whole family and made it look like an evasion. <sighs> then Emma, I skipped a part, but it's okay. Emma shot Greg before this happened. And they were having this whole entire like freak out moment. She shot Greg and then she went back to the table and she told him and she said that thing. But um she tells him like, yeah. This guy's like, yeah, she 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 um she drowned her son. She suffocated her daughter. And then she beat herself up and cut off her own finger. So that she could um tell this whole story and get money. Basically. That's basically what happened. Everyone else dies in the movie except for Sky. Sky lives through this. Sky lives through it. And she ultimately I believe she gets possessed by Emma. Because at the end, I'm just gonna skip to the end because you know how you know how scary movies end. Everyone dies but one person. <laughs> So, um, in the ultimate end, like, when we get to the part where Emma is chasing Skye around the house, Skye is the last one living, she's killed every, all the friends, the boyfriend, the best friend, the, the person that was just there for moral support, Randall, like, she killed everyone, I was, ex and Ashley, I was expecting at least Ashley to live, but Ashley said she gone, <laughs> Ashley went by the back. But anyway, so she's chasing Sky around the house, and Sky somehow gets like this bullet, and somehow Sky finds the gun to the because she used all the bullets, but she found one bullet that um that Emma had dropped, and she was she didn't know she dropped it, but she 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 got the bullet, and then she finds the gun that that Emma um dropped as well when she realized she was out of bullets. She puts the gun in the bullet and she shoots one shot off in her face. One shot. You know. And um, Emma's dead. Emma dies. And then we go to Sky, right? We go to Sky and I'm like, how's she gonna get out of this house? Because she done killed Emma. And they still locked inside this house. How they gonna how they how's she gonna kill her? How's she gonna get out? So we flip like another year later, we do another time jump and she's doing the interview and she's talking about how, how Emma was lying and everything. And now we look, then they do a scene where they kind of zoom in on her face and they're like, when, when she tells the reporter, like, um, it was all fake. They zoom in on her face and she does like a little wink to the camera. And I was like, oh yeah. Emma possessed her. Emma's inside of her. Sky is not even there anymore. I feel like Emma's there. I feel like Emma has taken over her whole entire soul. And that's how she got out. Because I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how she figured out the code. Because she didn't know anything. But maybe she figured it out. From either Emma being possessed. Or she went around the house and she found little clues to figuring out what the code was. But... My money is on that Emma and possessed Sky. Overall, the movie was really, really good. I really liked it. Um, it's like a lot of, like, there are some mixed reviews about the movie itself, but I would really just watch it for yourself and just have your own opinion about it. Um, if you like it, amazing. If you don't like it, it's okay. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see, what you want to hear from me. And like, comment, and share, and subscribe.